Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. I realize we haven't done differential equations for a while. I think this would be a good opportunity. So we have d squared y over dx squared minus y equals x squared. y is a function of x, and d squared y over dx squared represents the second derivative of y with respect to x, which we can also show as y double prime. Okay. Now, to be able to solve this problem, we're going to be using an interesting strategy first, and then I'll show you a second approach. The second approach will not be complete, but I'll give you all the outline, all the basics. Hopefully, you can take it from there. All right, let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to do what is pretty common with these kinds of equations. We have x squared on the right-hand side. So this is not a homogeneous equation. If this was equal to zero, then it will be easier to solve and that will be considered a homogeneous equation. But guess what? We're going to be solving the homogeneous version anyways because that's what we need. So we're going to find the homogeneous solution and then we're going to find a particular solution and we'll pull it all together. Okay? We'll put it all together. All right, great. So let's see how the homogeneous version works. So I'm going to write it as y double prime minus y equals zero. This would be considered the homogeneous equation. And these kinds of equations are pretty easy to solve, okay? Uh, they're very standard, and what we do is we actually use a characteristic equation to solve these kinds of equations. They're kind of like difference equations or recurrence relations. Anyways, I talk too much, let's get to work. So I'm going to basically assume that y can be written as a times or some constant c sub 1, whatever you want to call it e to the power a times, or let's call that uh, c sub 1, or just c, times e to the power some type of like, something like kx, okay? So that's what, what I'm going to do. Or I can assume that y can be written as e k to the x, because if we can use this without a constant, obviously adding a constant to the equation would not make a difference. Anyway, so if you differentiate this expression once, you're going to get c times k times e to the power kx because the k comes from the derivative of kx. And if you do that again, you're going to get c times k squared times e to the power kx. Make sense? And by substitution, you can go ahead and plug this into the equation and solve for y values. But let me go ahead and give you a shortcut that is going to be very helpful for these kinds of equations. Okay? And here's how it works. So whenever you see something like this, using the differential operator, which is the capital D, we can actually turn this into a somewhat polynomial looking equation. And that is done by the following. D squared represents the second derivative. And one just represents the function will be multiplied by one. So no derivative will be applied. So it's gonna be the function itself. So we're supposed to apply this to y and get zero from here. But how is that possible? Here's what you do. You replace the differential operator, capital D, with R, which is actually the roots of the characteristic equation, and then just write the same equation with R. And of course, you have to forget about Y because Y is not always zero. I mean, if Y is zero, then of course it's a solution, but you have to, you have to think about non-zero solutions. There are infinitely many, right? So in this case, R squared minus one equals zero will be our characteristic equation that comes from this differential operator thinking. I know it's not very rigorous and these are not the technical terms, maybe, but I hope uh, this helps. Now, here's what we're going to do with this. Of course, solve for r, right? If you solve for r, you're going to get r equals 1 and r equals negative 1 from here. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It, this just means that y equals e to the power rx is actually going to be a solution. Do you want us to check? For example, if r is equal to 1, then y is going to be e to the x. And if you plug it into our equation, the second derivative, the first derivative is e to the x, the second derivative is e to the x. If you subtract y double prime minus y, you're going to get e to the x minus e to the x, which is 0. Well, what about the other one? If r is equal to negative 1, right? If r is equal to negative 1, you're going to get y equals e to the power of negative x. And of course, 
the first derivative is going to be negative e to the negative x. The second derivative is going to be the negative of the negative, which is positive e to the power of negative x. And of course, this is the same as y. Therefore, their difference will be, I mean, this, the other way around, will be 0 again, right? Great. So those two solutions actually work. In other words, we have two solutions, y equals e to the negative x and y equals e to the power x. But how do you put it together? Here is where the linear combination comes in. Okay, so we're going to take a linear combination of these two functions and write it as y equals c sub 1 times e to the x plus c sub 2 times e to the power negative x. Because e to the x satisfies the equation, any constant times that satisfies it. e to the negative x is the same way. When you put it together, of course, the second derivative is going to be the same as the first function, the original function. Therefore, their difference will be 0. You can definitely test this out. Uh, it'll, it'll always work, okay? So that is the y value. What am I going to do with this? Well, this is the homogeneous solution. So we could call this y sub h, I guess, right? And then we're going to find a particular solution, which you can call y sub p, and then we'll put it together. How do you find a particular solution? So remember, our equation was y double prime minus y equals x squared. Since, instead of the homogeneous equation, I did get a non-homogeneous result, that contains an x squared, I'm just going to assume that my particular solution is going to be a quadratic. And that's kind of safe because when you take the derivatives, like second derivative is going to be a constant, and then you subtract the original function, which is a quadratic, the difference is supposed to be quadratic, right? So we're going to assume that y sub p, which is the particular solution, is going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's use capital letters, doesn't matter, no big deal. Now, here's what we're going to do. This is y, right? You know y, hopefully. We're going to differentiate it once. That's going to give us 2ax plus b. And now we're going to differentiate it one more time, and we'll get 2a. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to plug these into the equation. Which one? The original one, of course. This is the second derivative. This is the y value. Let's go ahead and plug those in. So we're supposed to get 2a minus ax squared minus bx minus c equals x squared. Not zero, because remember, you have x, x squared on the right-hand side. Great, so if you arrange these terms a little bit, you're going to get negative ax squared minus bx plus 2a minus c equals x squared. In order to get x squared on the left-hand side, negative a must be 1, no x on the right-hand side, so b must be zero, and from here we get a equals negative 1, so 2a minus c also needs to be 0 because there is no constant on the right-hand side. Make sense? So a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to 1, right? Wait a minute. b is not equal to 1, b is supposed to be 0. Uh, what am I doing? b is 0 because there is no x on the right-hand side. So b is 0 and 2a minus c is 0. In other words, c is 2a, which means c is equal to negative 2. Okay? So those are going to be the values. So y particular solution is going to be negative x squared plus 0x minus 2. Now, we're going to go ahead and put it together. To find the general solution, you're just going to add the homogeneous one and the particular solution, which is going to give you c sub 1 e to the x plus c sub 2 e to the negative x minus x squared minus 2. I just added the negative x squared minus 2 to the equation, and this will be the general, general solution. If you want, you can call that y sub g. And this brings us to the end of the first method because I still need to talk about the second method, but very briefly, okay? So, we have y double prime minus y equals x squared. Guess what you can do? You can use series, power series. How are power series, uh, can, how can they be used? Well, power series are basically a series that can be written as like infinite polynomials. This, in other words, it's kind of like a0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared, so on and so forth. So you can write it in this with the sigma notation, which is more compact because we're going to differentiate it. When you differentiate this, you're basically going to do the following. The n is going to be a coefficient multiplied by a sub n. The power is going to be reduced. But now you have to be careful because n equals 0 no longer exists. We have to start n with 1 because remember, we lost the constant. Uh, the x term became the constant. So this is going to be to infinity again. And then this is going to be first derivative. We don't care much about this first derivative. We just need to use it. And then differentiate this one more time. This time n needs to start at 2. And you're going to bring this n minus 2. So it's going to be multiplied by n. And you're going to get a sub n x to the power n minus 2. Now guess what? 
we know y double prime and y as power series and we're going to go ahead and plug them into our equation. So you're going to do the following. The rest is kind of easy. You're just going to go ahead and subtract this. And of course, you have to do some manipulations. That's why this method is pretty long. And that's why I don't want to get into details, but you can work out the rest. Now, we're supposed to set this equal to x squared and find the coefficients such that this is equal to x squared. Of course, this is going to be pretty painful. But let me tell you, this is a very rewarding experience. But one thing you need to do is kind of play with the um, indices here. So I'm going to place n with n plus 2 everywhere because that's going to give me uh, a sub n so that I can combine these two guys and come up with a single sigma and then I can expand it and go from there. All right? And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.